Good afternoon, Michael. Hello, Daniel. Good afternoon, everybody. This is running around Jerusalem. But again, we are not running around Jerusalem. We are up north, North Galil over there. There's a beautiful valley over there. Michael, what are we doing here? Well, again, we are here in collaboration with the Partnership Together program between the Central Galilee and the Michigan communities. And we are so excited to be able to run around Nofa Galil to show Nofa Galil to you guys back in the States and to get to export ourselves because it's a pretty fascinating place. And big thanks to the Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Detroit. Excellent. Subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to Facebook and talk to us. We would love to hear from you. Let's go. See what you got right at your feet? Uh, little stones. Pottery. <laughs> okay. Why am I showing you pottery? I don't know. Why are you showing me pottery? And what else do you see here? A uh, hole in the ground. A big hole in the ground. Yeah. Okay, some type of water system. But what does this give you an idea? This must have been a place where people Settlement. lived yeah. in ancient times. Yeah. And it was. And we're at a place that's called Tel Tiria. Okay. Come over here. I'll show you some of the other places they've excavated. Come on, guys, follow us. So when you planned the city here in the 1950s, uh -huh. this tell was unknown to them. Here, look, it's grown over now. But if you yeah. see, there's kind of like a sunken area. For sure. Like a square area, and you can start to see some there's bits of walls, over. yeah. Okay, uh, this is part of the places where they excavated. So what was the settlement? So this is the place that they, they excavated in the 1980s. Uh-huh. Tell Tyria. Right. And Tyria is actually mentioned in the Talmud, there's a person named Rav Oshia Ish Tyria. Uh huh. Okay. There we so go. We're talking about from the Talmudic period, just like we saw in Sipori when we ran around there. For sure. Okay. In fact, this guy was the uh, student of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. Yehuda Nasi being the person who compiled the Mishnah together yeah. in Sipori. I see. So, so when they established Nova Galil back in 1950, they had no idea that this place existed. And Ben Gurion actually stood on one of the mountains right up there, which we're going to go to in a little bit. Yeah. And looked down and said, We are going to establish a Jewish town right here. But it's amazing because he didn't realize that there was already an ancient Jewish village right. that had existed here. And they didn't actually find that out until the 1980s. I see. Pretty amazing. So he was kind of uh, he was kind of right all along, could away. He was, he was. And today Nofa Galil exists right here, so uh, his uh, what he wanted to happen definitely happened. Even though Nofa Galil is much more of a mixed city than a perhaps a Jewish city, no? It is a very mixed city. If you notice these houses across the street from us, uh huh. Okay. You have like this big nice house and these little tiny houses, right? Sure. So the little tiny houses were actually built and given away for almost nothing by the government to help absorb the Ethiopian Jews oh. that moved to Israel in the 1990s. And those who took advantage of it are probably happy because <laughs> a plot like that today is going to go for about 2 million shekels. Oh, amazing. So, so they did pretty well. Tons of trees. There are, and what do you have here? A bunch of new trees. Yeah, so I'm saying tons of new trees. The people in Detroit who donated yeah. 120 trees after the fire that hit a big area about nine months ago. That's over there. Some oh, yeah. of them were being planted right here. Oh, I see. That's what you're seeing. There's a few other places around the city that they planted them, but some of them right here. Amazing. And you can see the fire actually got up to even some of the houses on here. Oh, really? And they had to evacuate a bunch. So this is part of the uh, fruits of the partnership. So I've only run, what have I run? Hold on, 500 meters. I've seen an ancient Talmudic town, absorption center houses, new houses built across to them, new trees donated, a nice little park. This place is definitely a... <laughs> It's like one big hidden gem here. Yeah. Most people have probably never even heard of this place, to be honest. Right. Uh, 
well, I actually had never heard of it before <laughs> we were asked to come and do this. I will admit. Well, it's more, probably lots of people know it by its old name, we'll call it, which is Nazareth Elite. That's right, Nazareth Elite. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, you're telling me that the mayor decided to change the name. That's right. Why did he want to change the name? Well, he wanted it to have its own identity because if you think about the towns across Israel that are called elite, like Modi'in elite, yeah, or whatever, mm -hmm. it's all connected, to the, connected main town. to the main town. Yeah. So he didn't want this to be connected to Nazareth. He wanted to be its own thing. So he said, "We need a new name." And what is one thing that really defines this place? Around the edges and up high, the north, the view. Yeah. And you can see pretty much the entire Galilee here. So it's quite the appropriate name of Nova Galilea. And there's actually a beautiful bike path that goes around it. Just like we have the partnership path, partnership trail that goes from all the different partnership communities. Yeah. So one of the things they're working on is to try to connect it up to the path that comes here into Nova Galilea. Oh, to make one huge one, huh? Exactly. So, that's one of the things that uh, Hisham is working on, building those switchbacks to get all the way back up here. That's quality. Connected. I like that. So at the moment you have about a three and a half kilometer loop that you can do around this ridge here. It's oh, actually not that big. I thought it'd be bigger. Okay. Wow. Speaking of the partnership, one of the Shinshinim that's going to be spending the next year in Michigan is Amit. You see a picture of her right here. She's actually from just south of Nofa Galil, a place called Ahuzat Barak. And one of the things that struck me about Amit is how much she really loves exploring the nature and the springs and the valleys and the fields that are all around this area. And it's actually an interesting thing and a phenomenon really here in Israel where the young people, they really go out and they hike around and they look for springs and they like to be out in nature. And it's really an amazing, amazing uh, um, part of the culture here. And I bring that up because here we are, Nofa Galil, and one of the main things that we've been talking about is the beauty that you have around here. So Amit is really part of that culture. And she told me that when you come and visit here in uh, the partnership region, that her mom is actually the best cook that she knows. And you're all invited back to her house uh, to have some great traditional Israeli food. So one of the people that I met that live in North Galil, probably the biggest cheerleader and expert for this place, I would say, is a guy named Arya. Yeah. He's been here since like the 1960s. Uh -huh. And he grew up here and he went off, he did Shlichut in England for a while. Uh -huh. But when he wanted to come back, he wanted to you know, establish a place to live, he came back to North Galil. So I'll get returns from Shlichut. With his, and he wants to set up a family in the Fagadi. That's right. He knows more about this place than pretty much anyone alive. And so he took me around to all these uh, neat little hidden places, some of which I'm going to take you guys today. Very cool. I'm excited. Uh, yes. One day I asked him, like, what do you like about this place so much? And first of all, he's definitely a nature nut. And you can see how nature is beautiful here. Sure. And we drove all over the place looking for the uh, iris of Nazareth, which is a particular type of flower, okay. which blooms around this time of year. Uh -huh. And he just sent me like five different pictures of him next to different uh, irises. So okay. I'm gonna show you guys one right here. There's Arya, there's his iris of Nazareth. Okay. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> so that's one. Uh, number two is the mixture of people you have here. So tell me about the mixture of people. So first of all, you've already seen parts of it, right? That if you've noticed, there is- Definitely at the bottom by the tail, I was definitely in a predominantly Arab Muslim neighborhood. That's uh, right. Just come up the hill, it's definitely changed. Most, a lot of the signs of the shops here were in Russia. <laughs> so we've definitely gone through a significant change as the hill's gone up. This town is basically a kibbutz galiot, like right. an ingathering of the exiles. Melting pot. All in one, a melting pot. Yeah. And it's different than like Migdal Emek in that regard, in that you also have Arabs here. A lot of Arabs have moved in to this town from Nazareth. So we have a great melting pot 
of Jewish communities. And apart from that, you're saying that it's also become more and more or more and more Arab communities have also moved here as well. That's right. Okay, so why is that? So Nazareth, which is the big city in the area, really crowded and it's really expensive. I see. And so people move out of it and they move to Nofa Galil, which is, as you'll see when we run, we're going to be running actually from here into Nazareth, into the old city. I see. And you'll see, you cross over and there's such a big difference in the, the quality of life, to be honest. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming Nazareth is quite touristy, a little bit, old streets, but packed. In okay. short, this is a place where people can so come, they can buy, they can buy up land, they can get it pretty cheap. Can expand outwards a little bit. Exactly. Right. And then you just look around, you see the name of this town, Nova yeah, Galil. Sure, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So unlike Migdal Emek, which you don't really have any Arabs living there, here you have quite a mix in the community. Right. And as Arya said, on his street you have Arabs and Jews. And even in Jerusalem, you don't see that very often. No, it's not very you common. see very segregated uh, neighborhoods. neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Nova Galil, it's really not. So that's something that's pretty, uh, pretty special about this place. I see. So literally on the same street you'll get Arab Muslim, Arab Christians and Jews living together. That's right. Uh, the Jews are going to be Ethiopians, Russians, Ashkenazi, Moroccan, Swadi, whatever. You got it. Great, I like it. But Arya, in fact, loves this place so much, he says he wants to put little uh, barcodes on the buildings right. that, so you can scan them and find out the history and like who lives there and things like that. So, <laughs> it is. He's amazing. Very 1984 though. Bit <laughs> yeah, worried about that one. The idea of being able to figure out who it is that lives in these houses is actually quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And one of the communities that lives here in Nova Galil is okay. actually an urban kibbutz. What's that mean? So you know what a kibbutz is? Sure. Okay. You guys know what a kibbutz is? Oh God, let's go explain again. Fine. Right, let's explain what a kibbutz is. Okay. First, I think we're going to the left. Okay. I swear you're just choosing where it goes uphill. How are you doing on that uphill? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So it's, it's fabulous. <laughs> it's like running up Haifa, which if anyone has done is ridiculous as well, to go from the lower city to the upper city. It's just an endless snake path going up and up and up. And you think, oh, it must be, we must be high. No, 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 no. no. To get to the University of Haifa, you're not at the top. And that is so high above you. And it is it's like vertical climbing. Okay. Well, if you want the good view, you gotta go up the top. Gotta go up the top. Up the top. Alright, more stairs. Here more stairs, go. here we go. Going up again, guys. This is my Come on up with us. Just being me for the sake of it, I think. Okay, we're almost uh, up to Roscoe. We're yeah, almost up to the, the main center. Don't worry, just a little bit more uphill. And then all the way down to Nazareth, we get a nice downhill. You know what I told you guys at Sipori, you should take your kids and do the route and it'll be fun. When you come here, don't do this route. It's take the like bus, that. take the bus Take tour. the 41 bus up the hill and then continue from there. <laughs> So city kibbutz, yeah, right. Okay, start off again. So okay. kibbutz is so a kibbutz is this communal living where everyone pools all their resources and they basically share it and they live together as this community. Yeah. And they're famous in Israel because of the agricultural kibbutzim that helped really found the state right. uh, and set up all the different institutions that we're based on now. And it's ultra socialist. It's group living. Yes. Everyone pulls the money together. There's no actual salary. It's kind of shared between everyone. 
you know, you get your housing, car, everything else in the kibbutz. Exactly. Right. And even today, most of the kibbutzim that still exist, they're not what you call shitufi. No, no. Meaning that people don't pull everything. No. They, they're somewhat privatized. Yeah. However, the urban kibbutz that exists here in Nofa Galil is still shitufi, meaning they pull all the resources. Okay. But they're not farmers. I'm not, not sure. Right. Not in the middle of the city. What they do is they're involved in education, most of them. There are occasional people who here and there, there's like a graphic artist and someone else who does something else here, but most of them are involved in teaching and educational pursuits. And they basically got a building that was an old absorption center here. Right. And you have about 120 members of this kibbutz who live here in the middle of the city. And they live in a complex? Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought they were kind of spread out or something. Right. No, but it's interesting because you don't think about a kibbutz being in the middle of the city. No, definitely not. But it absolutely can be. And the largest one in Israel is the one here. Really? Yep. Oh, wow. How many people is it? 120 members, but that doesn't include kids, right? Because right. kids are not members yet. Right, I see. Or dogs. <laughs> or dogs, that's right. Horses, no. I can't join there we go. Them. Nope, no horses. Leave them in Tipori. I've got a sign up above me that says Shufa son. Right, remember him CEO. from Migdal Emek. Exactly. We said this is the son of the Iceman, right? And it's got Rascal on it, which is giving me some hope that the uphill's gonna end. Yes. And we're coming to the main shopping center area. If you want a falafel, guys, this is the place to go. Okay. Let's go on up here and up the stairs. Oh, we're going up again. Yes, Let's we're going up again. Through. Come on up the stairs with us. Yeah. Right, like all towns, it's gonna have a memorial to its fallen. Right, to its fallen soldiers. So this is the Nofa Galilu one. So that was really the center of town, huh? Uh, yeah, that's Pretty the main chart. <laughs> but here's the thing, if there's any Ayakorum fans, they probably recognize that place. Why so? Go on, explain. So, she has a song out. She's a singer, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know. Uh-huh. And she's from Nofa Galil? She's from Nofa Galil. But the song is really funny. It's called Malakat Natert Elite. Right? The Queen of Natert Elite. Right, the old name. Yes. Right. Uh, and in the song, in the video, she's pictured singing in that area in front of the falafel stand. Uh-huh. And a couple other places throughout the city. That's cute. So, but why am I bringing that up? Not because I want to tell you to go to her YouTube video, but you can if you want. You can if you want. All right. Definitely should. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but because she's actually famous in another way, because there's actually a law on the books in the Knesset called the Ayakorum Bill, or the Ayakorum Law. Okay, which is what? Which is essentially, it limits the control that record companies have over the artists. They can only contract the artists for a maximum of seven years. 
which means that essentially they get like a free agency in a way. Basically, the Iacorum bill we're talking about prevents record companies or producers from taking advantage of the artists because it limits the length of the contract uh -huh. that they can be in. And this thing was a proposed like 10 years ago. It finally passed all the readings and everything became law just about three years ago. But I also find it interesting because what number do they choose? What number? Well, yeah, for how many years? Oh, seven? Seven years. Why is that number significant? Where have you heard that before? Shmita, right? And the whole concept of that's when you, you, according to the Torah and the laws, that you free any slaves that you owned, right? right, right. It had to do with the Shemitah year, the seventh sabbatical year. And it's just amazing because in every aspect of life, you see our ancient roots sure, coming sure, up sure, again sure. and again. Yeah, yeah. So again, just like we have in Midal Emek, when yep. you're running through here, you get the sense that on the outskirts beyond these buildings, you have this magnificent, magnificent view. And we know you do. For sure, absolutely fabulous. To the right of us, it's really amazing. And before it was behind us, it really is a 360 degree panoramic experience. Really, this whole region that we're in right now is called the Lower Galilee. Right. Because of the heights of the mountain ridges that are here. I see. Right, in the Upper Galilee, which is also more in the north, you also have high mountains, they're like twice as high. But the Lower Galilee, it's a really easy region to, to see to put topographically because it's made up of four ridges and four valleys. Okay. So ridge, so valley, ridge, valley, ridge, valley. Pretty simple. Yeah, and the partnership region for Michigan is essentially the Nazareth Ridge area. This whole ridge that we're running along now uh -huh. with this area, this is that whole partnership region. Okay. So if you want to understand where it is topographically, now you guys know. That lowest ridge of the Galilee, right? Okay, that's easy to remember. And let's not get hit by a bus. You know, one theme you have throughout, no matter where you run in Israel, you always are about to get hit by a bus, it seems. Well, the bus drivers in Israel think they're Michael Schumacher. It's, it's a, a famous. Oh, I thought it was that in order to be a bus driver in Israel, you had to first be a driver in the tank corps. Right, that's possible. So we just passed the square. You notice it said Eli Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. Right. So Eli Cohen, the famous spy, Mm -hmm. Israeli spy in Syria. Yeah. So why do they have a square for him here? Eli Cohen had a brother that lived here. Oh, I see. So that's why they have a square named after him. We're about to see one of the most amazing hidden gems okay. that I have for you. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, I want you to pay attention to the houses. You're yeah. going to see a lot of Arabic on them as well. Uh -huh. Okay. This okay. is a predominantly one of the Arab neighborhoods we talked about. But remember we talked before about how Ben-Gurion stood at somewhere on the top of this hill. Yes. Up here. 
Come on, guys, follow me this way. Hidden gem in Nova Galia. Look at this thing, right here. Come on guys, come look at this. You see what we have in front of us? Isn't that an Brit old British yeah. sentry tower? A sentry, sentry tower. tower. Yeah. Okay, oh. but it's one of the old British uh, it is. fortifications. British. Yes, very clearly okay. British. So the story goes that Ben-Gurion stood here at this British sentry tower. Right. And he looked down below us and he said, this is where it's gonna be a Jewish town. So the, yeah. right, the inscription I told you about, it's just right over this guy's garage, right. okay? It's a verse from uh, the, the Quran, yeah. okay? And it's the before going to sleep. Exactly, it's like yeah. the Shema for yeah, the yeah. Quran. Yeah, yeah. All right, amazing. You don't see any Hebrew anywhere, no. all Arabic here, yeah, but yeah. look, it's such an amazing neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. All right. Beautiful, stunning. Speaking of which, you ready for the last gem in our, in our visit here? Go to Nutsot, baby. We're heading Woo! to Nazareth. So we're heading down into Nazareth now. So basically enough, I got in really like runs into Nazareth basically. One runs into the other. Really? We are not lost. We just came here so we could show you the other Mona Lisa of the Gal Galilee. Right, that must be it. So it's definitely a right turn there somewhere that we walk past. I missed the left turn. 
But I think I'm justified because does this look like a turn to you? But we get a nice, another <laughs> nice view in front part. of us. Yeah, that means a fabulous view. Coming in kind of like the back entrance of Nazareth, it feels like here. I've got quite the hidden gem for you because we're going to go into the marketplace, which is really quite beautiful. And Nazareth, today, when you come to Israel, okay, mm. there's a whole hostel system. Yes. Right? People can go and they can stay in these beautiful hostels, wonderful hostels. It wasn't always the place. It wasn't always, you didn't have these hostels. And there's one guy named Maoz Inon. Okay. who had traveled around South America and he and his wife enjoyed staying in the hostels there. It really made their experiences they found being right. together with the other guests. Like if you ever traveled around, you know, I remember when I was in Italy, it was the same thing. You know, stayed with a bunch of random people in the room sure. and you go together, have like, you know, some pasta and wine at local vineyard right there and share stories. And it was really amazing. Oh, so there was nothing like that here. So my oldest came back and he said, well, I'm going to open it. I'm going to start it. And he came here and he opened a place called the, called the Fauzi uh, Azar Inn okay. here in Nazareth, which is where we're going to right now. Uh -huh. And when it opened, it was the first of its kind, not just in Nazareth, but really, but really in all of Israel. And today you'll see as we wander through the streets, there are dozens of these hostels that are there. Right. And all over Israel, you have a lot yeah, of the hostels all over yeah, the place. Yeah, sure. um, and it's all started with uh, Mosey Nan and his dream. And he actually is the owner of a series of hostels all across Israel called the Abraham Hostels. Uh -huh. There's one in Jerusalem we talked about in one of our runs. Uh, there's one in Tel Aviv, they have one here, and I think he opened a new one recently in Eilat. So behind me is a Greek Orthodox church. Definitely running down a more of a touristy place when COVID's not around, like the different shops and stuff. Um, but let's talk about what this place was originally. So when we were further up the hill, we spoke about how, you know, this place was basically a small village uh, 2,000 years ago, and Zipporah was the main was the main hub. And this was kind of an out of the way backwater, basically. Well, well you've got it absolutely right, and it's less than a small village. You're talking about like four or five little houses oh, really that would have been here and uh, at the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago. And Sipori, as you mentioned, that was the main town of the Galilee. That was right. main center. What makes this place uh, important is Thanks. the Christians that start coming here. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so that's why it becomes important. It's because of uh, what happened afterwards, this place grew into the, the big town. Right. Now today, Nazareth has uh, mostly uh, Muslim population, about 70, 75% oh, really? of them are Muslim uh, and not Christian anymore. A lot of the Christians have actually moved off to North Galil, oh, really? which is where we, where we were. I see. Right, Ari actually tells me that on his street during Christmas time, it's almost like he's in the, <laughs> in the, the uh, Hutzar, world. it's right. right, in the Western world because there's a lot of Christmas decorations I see. around there. Uh, the Creek Orthodox Church at the, 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 the big square that we went through. Yeah. Um, that was definitely... This way. See, here we're in the, we're in the, the alleyways, yeah, the old yeah. market. You can start to see a bunch of different inns. All these signs we see posted up that way, that way. They're all for different uh, inns. Little hostels, yeah. Little hostels that you have. And there's all kinds of coffee shops and whatever in non-COVID times. It's a really charming little yeah, town. It really is, actually. And look, we just ran here in how many minutes? 15 minutes or whatever? All downhill from Nova Galil. 
So definitely, definitely worth a worth a visit. Right. Let's get another one. Here we go, right in here. All right. We've made it, let's go inside. Come on in. This is the Fauzi Azar Hostel. What I didn't tell you guys about the story here is that when Maoz Inon decided to open this place, he found this wonderful little compound here and he got permission from the family to use it and to partner with them to create the Fauzi Azar Hostel here. The one condition was that the daughter wanted to name it after her father, and since hence the name Fauzi Azar. This is one of the coolest places I've ever been. That is wicked. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful place, huh? It's amazing. You can see they've, they've tried to recreate how it was. The Ottoman style arch roof. It's absolutely fabulous. And one of the things that they also have done is they created a trail called the Jesus Trail, right. which runs from here all the way to the, the no, all oh. the way to the Sea of Galilee, oh over goodness. 60 kilometers away. Oh, wow. And it's a great way to hike the country for Christian pilgrims looking to looking we'll to hike in the foothills. Today, I'm through. Next time. How about a cup of coffee? Then? I'd love a cup of coffee. Okay. How about a cup of coffee? That was another 6k run. We ran from the Fagalil up the most steep hill in the world. This was a fabulous run. This was an amazing experience. This is a place where I've never been before. I've never seen before. I've never experienced the people, the colors, the smells, the types of people. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Everybody from the federations who uh, brought us out here from the partnership communities. Absolutely. To all of you who are doing this great work with these communities, cheers to you. And keep donating to your federations because it makes these kind of things happen. Have a good one and catch us next time. Running around Jerusalem.